A competent budget action title packed with cliché which comes to life in multiplayer. Welcome to the haunted Hell's Reach, an over-the-shoulder wave-based shooter which doesn't really do anything new, but by using well-established game mechanics produces a fast-paced, entertaining and absorbing experience. There is no story here, but you can just insert the generic Hell has been let loose and you're a band of survivors fighting to put it back in its place plot. So if you're looking for an in-depth game driven by the narrative, you're in the wrong place. The game is essentially like a cross-section between Gears of War and Killing Floor, both in execution and in terms of style, with a very splat-happy gore style, and the screen routinely being smeared with jam as you blow the brains off another demonic hellspawn. So it starts out pretty basic. You have a bog-standard pistol and have to deal with an onslaught of mutant zombie-type creatures, which throw lumps of gore at you while doing little to no damage at all. These are pretty easy to deal with, as you can usually one-shot them every time. After a few kills, you'll get your hands on the ammunition for your other guns, namely a shotgun and a rifle, which allow you to spray and pray a little more, taking out entire batches of creatures, allowing you to really start building on that combo system. It takes a little while to figure out how best to work with this system to bring the points pouring in. A lot of it is to do with finding a good spot surrounded by spawn points, which allow you to have a consistent flow of creatures to keep the combo rolling. But there's also a whole bunch of different methods to get points, such as getting headshots using the various explosives and traps dotted around the environment, and interrupting attacks before they land. A lot of these will give you more points, but as mentioned, the key to scoring highly is joining it all together in one long combo. Another element of the gameplay is the routinely spawning health and chronostones, which spawn relatively frequently. The health stone, as you might expect, restores your health when you destroy it, but the chronostone has a timer behind it, which if left to its own devices, will eventually detonate. This will then cause a special event to start, which is level dependent and ranges from the caves collapsing above your head, to flames emitting randomly from the floor, or meteors raining from the sky. Each one of these is a massive threat to yourself as well as the enemy, but can often be avoided by heading in or outdoors. These stones appear randomly on a level, meaning you can't just keep your head down in one area and let them come to you. You're instead forced to find them, and if you're not fast enough, one of the demons will pick the stone up and run around the map dragging you through massive congregations of Hellspawn. Of course, the key to keeping any player interested in a wave-based horde game is progression, both in terms of weaponry and in terms of enemies, and The Haunted has more than enough variations of both to make you adapt to different situations. To upgrade your weaponry, you have a bar which gradually fills up with every kill you make, and once you fill it, the next kill will drop a weapon upgrade which activates on whichever weapon you happen to be wielding at the time. The system works well until weapons are running low on ammo, as it will automatically change if you have none left, sometimes resulting in you upgrading the wrong weapon. Each of the weapons has six potential upgrades, which although most of them aren't particularly unique, there is one major exception in the form of the superbly named Arsonator for obvious reasons, which is probably the most powerful weapon in the game as it can dispatch of just about anyone. The monsters also get progressively harder as you make your way through the waves, and although a lot of them are variations on creatures we've all seen before, they have enough of a twist on them to make them both distinctive and interesting. They range from very basic things like ogres with clubs to creatures which pounce, but the most interesting ones are the ones with a special theme, like the one with a huge mechanical jaw which breathes fire and chomps on your face when it gets close enough. There is also an armoured variation for a lot of the monsters, which although you can eventually wear them down with weaponry, you're best off charging up your melee attack and taking a swipe at them to destroy them in one powerful strike, or using the various explosives lying around the map. So essentially, it's very generic, but with enough variety and with competent execution of game mechanics, which when it's all combined together makes for a very entertaining and addictive horde shooter. It's without a doubt a budget title, but it doesn't skimp on the elements which are important. The game is stable and packed with content. So many other indie titles have tried and failed because they were trying to do too much. My only real complaint would be that it's got quite a heavy focus on the multiplayer element. The game is undoubtedly better when you have a full squad of people, but this is a small-scale indie shooter, and it really shows when you load up the server list. I managed to get into one game with a full team, and it was so much better. It was faster, there was so much more happening with the increased number of mobs, and the possibility of resurrecting each other created desperate rescue missions, making it a much more complete experience. There are eight levels in total, which translates to about five hours of content if you complete each one once. It's definitely worth the price, and I recommend giving it a try without a doubt, but you will have a much better time if you can persuade your friends to split the four-pack with you. This is non-stop, guns-blazing, demon-blasting, gory violence, time after time, just the way it should be.